Uh, my name is Mike Bodiford. I'm from Somerville, South Carolina. Uh, I was an Army veteran. I went to Iraq in 2004. Even though we went there for what we all thought was a good reason, that you know, everyone that fought us wasn't necessarily a terrorist. They they hate us because we're there. And that you know, if, if, if you kill someone's brother or their father, uh, either legitimately or, or, or illegitimately, they're going to hate you and they're going to come back and try to kill you. And then when you kill them, it's just perpetual violence. And it never ends. And there's never a goal. We never went over there and said, if, once you take this city, it's over. And, you know, year after year after year, and more and more of my friends died, and more and more money was spent. And there's never an end goal. And then finally, you know, we're out now with never a deciding battle, never a, 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 a clear victory. It was just, okay, guys, you're finished. And it's very demoralizing, I think, to me and a lot of the people I served with to know that your friends died and you don't really know why. You know, we went over there for WNDs and there's nothing there. And we haven't changed their culture. We haven't changed the way that they, they feel and think about us. If anything, they hate us more. And we've let, you know, it, it's under, it undermines our own national security. And it undermines our reputation around the world and undermines the morale of our military. And, and I think um, Ron Paul has the right idea when he says that just leave them alone. If they want to go over there and, and handle things the way they want to, let them. It doesn't bother us any. All we have to do is just leave them alone. If they want to kill each other, have at it. You're not affecting us at all. And uh, why waste our money? Why waste our men? And why why are Americans so easily expendable? You know, how come these other countries aren't going there and dying? You know, why does America always have to be the one that bears the brunt of all this? Why do we have to pay for it? Why do so many of us have to get killed and blown up? You know, I, I don't understand it. If we're, if we're so valuable and America really, really, really loves its veterans, then why do they so easily send us over to, to die? It doesn't make any sense to me. No one has the, the, the dedication that Ron Paul you know, has. Uh, I mean, I think once you believe, it, once you see the truth, I think that's whenever it's so easy to be passionate and so it's so easy to be eloquent about what you're saying. Because you don't have to come up with a, a skewed view. Or you don't, I don't have to make you believe what I believe. All I have to do is just tell you the truth. And um, you know, either you accept the truth or you don't. And I, I think Ron Paul is the only one that comes close to, you know, telling the actual truth. I mean, even though it's not always shiny, it doesn't always, it's not always what you want to hear. You don't want to hear that, yeah, your military isn't going to win this war. Because, you know, us as Americans, we hate losing. Patton said America hates a loser. You know, he always wanted to go after the, you know, the, the winner. And, and for us to be told that you're not going to win, we, it's hard to stomach, but it's the truth. Unless you want to go over there and just kill every single one of them, you're not going to change their way of life or their culture, and you're and, and especially not going to change the way they feel about you by killing more and more of them. So um, I think that's why it's so, I think that's why this, you know, Ron Paul passion, I guess, is so uh, contagious. Because once someone gets turned on to the truth, they're like, wow, I never never realized how how this all worked and how we're being, we're being manipulated by the media. If you look at our Bill of Rights, where they tell us that we're supposed to, you know, we, you know, we pledge allegiance to our country and, and uphold all this stuff, and they tell us that on the one hand, and then on the other, they're taking them all away. And if you are against the Patriot Act, you're somehow against America. Or if you're against the wars, then you're somehow against the military. And it doesn't make any sense to me, but, you know, I think um, if Ron Paul keeps on keeping on, that, you know... Cue music. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, I think, I think, um... If he doesn't win the nomination, the conversation will still be there, the message will still be there, and someone will pick up the torch. At least I hope so. Yeah, awesome. So if somebody, um, do you love Charleston? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was very excited about moving here. I moved here from Baltimore. I was stationed in Fort Meade, and I was very excited about moving here. And um, and I like it a lot. And it's good to be here with a lot of Rob Paul supporters who feel the same way I do. And, uh, you know, like-minded people. I've had very, very good conversations in there. And, and um, it's, it's so... Uh, encouraging to know that no, I'm not the only one paying attention. Right, right, right. If somebody was going to do two things in Charleston, only two things, what's the two things they should see and do, just from a touristy perspective? Well, you should see uh, you should see Ron Paul speak and you should vote for Ron Paul. <laughs> that's, that's one thing you should see and do in Charleston.